Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by the following. By Coca-Cola, serving Alaska quality soft drinks since 1937. By Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, an Alaska Native Corporation promoting economic and social progress for people throughout the state. By the generous support of the Alaska Native Health Board. By the Alaska Commercial Company, Alaska's supplier of food, family apparel, and general Alaskan merchandise since 1867. There's a Louder thunder, revolution is in the air. There's a heartbeat deep inside our mother. Are you too cool to care? Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you native news across the north, along with my cameraman, John Dimmick, and my intern, Marvin Parent. We're all here thanking you so much for joining us. On today's program, we travel to Nuke. No, not Nuke, Greenland, but Nuke, Alaska, where there was a summer camp this summer. Then down to the state of Washington and learn about the Tulalip Indians on the Tulalip Indian Reservation. Then up to the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, where they'll show us how we will be shot out nationally on September 8th. We'll take a look at their facility, all that plus much more. Gary Fife won't be with us this week. He's taking the week off. And I'll be back with more news from Heartbeat Alaska right after these messages. Revolution is in the air. There's a heartbeat deep inside our mother. Are you too cool to care? We have always felt in harmony with the land. Chakome, Tapua, the Skumuk, the Tapiachu, Kenok Anesche, Matapua, Makaspumos, Akun. Help the Soil Conservation Service help our earth. Call us today. We owe it to our children. Jacob. Ruby. Joseph. The names are many. Walter. People from the bush. Buddy. People from the cities. Alex. Eskimos. Sue. Aleuts. Indians. George. They're all our people. Peter. Deaths from Jamie. alcoholism must stop. Herman. And there is help. Julie. It's at the Alaska Native Moses. Alcoholism Recovery Center. Daniel. Call Anarch now. Alice. For yourself. Tommy. For a friend. Carl. Or for a family member. Mike. Honor Jane. our dead. Jeff. But celebrate life. Sergey. Call Anarch. Sam. Rachel. Welcome back. No, I am not on the warpath. You can all relax. <laughs> Let's travel to University of Alaska, where we'll find out just how we're shot out nationally on September 8th from the University of Alaska School of Engineering in Fairbanks. Heartbeat Alaska is broadcast in Fairbanks over KUAC-TV Channel 9, as well as a commercial station, Channel 11, over KTVF. KUAC-TV Public TV and the University of Alaska Fairbanks School of Engineering will be uplinking with the satellite on the West Coast called Telstar 401. The transmission will be made weekly beginning Thursday, 8 p.m. Alaska time. For several months, KUAC-TV and University of Alaska School of Engineering have been preparing for the transmission, making sure the broadcast signal is clear, and alerting public television stations to look for us. We here at Heartbeat Alaska will be sending our press packets to over 300 public broadcast stations across America. Many are standing by waiting to pick us up on that date. Thank you so much, University of Alaska Fairbanks School of Engineering, and also KUAC-TV and everyone involved in getting me that video. We're going national September 8th, as you know, and they're the ones that are making it possible. And speaking of going national, we have the national powwows from across the nation, and Buzz Daney with us. Hi, Jeannie. 
Buzz is going to be singing a song. Buzz, now you're from the Choctaw Nation Indian tribe, but he's going to be singing a song that is actually from the Navajo Nation. That's right, Jeannie. This song was given to us by a Navajo man who traveled up here. And this song was very old, as we explained it to us. And this song was given to the intertribal community here in Alaska. So we're very grateful, and I hope to sing this with the respect that it was given to us. A few weeks ago, we learned about the Menominee tribe from Wisconsin. This week, we traveled to the state of Washington. This time, the tribe is the Tulalip. To Lalip. It's a land as beautiful as its waters are pristine. This is the Tulalip Tribes Reservation. 22,000 acres nestled on the shores of Puget Sound in northwest Washington. Here, eagles soar freely as they have for countless generations. Their watchful eyes never straying far. Tulalip is home to over 2,000 tribal members, all descendants of six coastal Salish tribes and allied bands. The year 1855 brought the tribes together. That's when the Point Elliott Treaty created the Tulalip Reservation. Each family brought strength from its past to adapt to a new way of life. The reservation was new, but the personality of the people remained unchanged. There was a way to improve your status by being a hard worker or somebody that had a real uh, worthy talent. So I guess you see that carrying on, you know, from generations past into today, that uh, th that's what, you know, made the people here what they are. They are people who respect their past. Traditionally called the people of the fish, the Tulalips have turned a backyard hatchery into a multi-million dollar facility that releases 10 million salmon a year. Indians and non-Indians benefit. Every June, the precious fish is honored. The salmon ceremony continues today as it has in the past. Big Chief King Sam, a very important visitor coming to the beach now. Two Lalips are thankful that salmon runs are once again strong. But this isn't a tribe to sit still. Years ago, Two began diversifying to ensure its long range economic health. A logging operation cuts four million board feet a year. 
A state-of-the-art bingo facility generates a third of tribal revenue. Residential and commercial leases strengthen the tribe's cash flow. The commercial property borders Interstate 5. It's five minutes from Everett, just a half hour from Seattle. And Tulalip has plans. It owns one of the largest chunks of property along the I-5 corridor between Seattle and the Canadian border. The tribe is uh, looking forward to a business park here that creates jobs for our members. That's the main thing we look for is uh, jobs for our members. Under the plans, this dirt road will be turned into a badly needed freeway interchange. It will open up 900 acres for the industrial park. The tribe is preserving a green belt as a heron rookery. It's got to be win-win for the environment and for the business. And the tribe's here to see that, make sure that that takes place. Since the 1930s, Tulalip has annually elected its board of directors to oversee tribal business. These men and women meet regularly to set policy and discuss social programs. We have, we have a, lot on, a lot more ongoing programs for our tribal members than ever, but it's always been on an ongoing basis that we, have, we provide as many services as we can that can reach um, every member of the family. We have so much to offer and we care so much about our members and we're willing to spend the money that we earn on the members for the education to better them to prepare for the future. Linda Jones oversees Tulalip's social services. There is no better investment of our money than our people. We've always placed a, a great deal of emphasis on economic development programs, successful economic development programs, but the reality of it is, is we want to be able to run those. Uh, we want to have a future for our children. Jones explains that education is the key to the tribe's future. Tulalip runs its own preschool. It donated land for this elementary school where students can dream of what they will be when they grow up. A doctor because so I can help people that need help. And to help make those dreams come true, Tulalip created its own alternative high school. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're going to have English and we're going to I'll uh, be talking about letter writing today. Here, students with special needs are realizing their goal of graduating. How will you feel having a diploma? It'll feel good Would because it? I'll be the first person in my family to graduate from high school. Tell me what Julie's eating these days. Tulalip wants its tribal members healthy and strong. Its health clinic services range from prenatal care <laughs> to a well child program. Um, what type of formula is he usually using now? Uh, no. Okay, and Esther, let's check your blood pressure. Jar right there. To taking care of older people. I think that, you know, the, um, the health of the people is, you know, what you're striving at in, in, in any kind of health programs. And, and you know, you can't have um, good leaders if you don't have healthy leaders. Tulalip's Alcohol and Family Services program shows what the tribe is willing to do to help its members. If they need to go to inpatient treatment, if they, have, if they don't have any other resources to pay for it, the tribe will pay their way. In 1989, Tulalip spent $165,000 sending members to drug and alcohol treatment. Tulalip has given me a birth of life, a new life. Caring about others is rooted deep in Tulalip culture. The family services staff relies on a circle of healing ceremony to let go of stress. An eagle's feather is used. Strength, you know, like the strength of the wings of an eagle. And so when we have any problems, we can put it upon this feather, and we know that it's going to be able to take it. Long ago in Tulalip's past, young people were taught to be especially kind to elders. That respect has lived on through the years. <coughs> the tribe has saved waterfront property for an elders complex scheduled to be built soon. 
This reservation has evolved into an ideal place to raise a family. The tribe is prospering economically and at the same time is holding on to its rich culture. Prosperity isn't all of it. That we need to remember our past and we, and we need to nurture it and carry it forward into the 20th century because only by remembering our past I think that we as a people will have any kind of a future. Everything we do here, whether it's education, whether it's fishing, um, whether it's planning for the tribe's future is for our children, for our families, yes. Yes, the Tulalips are, are caring people. Tulalip? I should say Tulalip is special. It is, it's, it's, for one thing, it's home. This is home and it always will be home. I haven't found a better place yet. I want people to know that, that we're proud of being a Tulalip Indian. Their pride is undeniable. It's been passed down through generations. Well, the Tulalip uh, uh, people, I uh, believe, are a special people that were put here um, because of their uh, concern for the environment, the salmon, their culture. They know that. Uh, we were given the most beautiful spot on this total uh, earth, and uh, we were placed here to protect it. Eagles are held in high esteem at Tulela. Legend teaches that eagles bring good luck, that to see one is a good omen. And... I hear an eagle. What does that yeah, signify to you? That, uh, that's, that no, they know they know that we're here. They're guarding us. They're guarding us. There was a long time when there wasn't a lot of eagles around, but we must be doing something right because there's sure there's a lot of them here today, and we created a good environment for them, and that's what we want to do for our people is create a good environment for them to come back to. Don't go away now. We'll travel to Nuke, Alaska right after these messages. We have always felt in harmony with the land. Chakome, Tapua, the Skumuk, Ta Tapiachu, Kenok Anesche, Matapua, Makaspumos, Akum. Help the Soil Conservation Service help our Earth. Call us today. We owe it to our children. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by TCC, a joint venture with Chenega Bay, Tatitlik, and Chugach Alaska Corporation. Through SERVS, ship escort response vessel system, providing tanker escort services in Prince William Sound. Protecting our environment. Chugach Alaska Corporation. Summertime here in Alaska is so much fun, filled with tourists and visitors. It's also fun for a lot of youth. We've been showing some youth camps here in Heartbeat Alaska, and we want to show you another one. This time, a little ways from Nome, it's called Nuke, Alaska. Over 85 youth of all ages and from all over the Seward Peninsula converged on a campground near Safety Sound at Nuke last week to participate in the 5th Annual Bering Strait Region Youth Camp. The Norton Sound Health Corporation has been holding this camp for five years. 
It was sponsored by the Northern Lights Recovery Center in conjunction with the Norton Sound Health Corporation or alcohol program at Norton Sound Health Corporation. The goal of the camp was to teach interactive skills to counteract substance abuse and enhance cultural values. I see the thing I've noticed with the youth here um, from the first day to the second day, you know, a lot of them not knowing each other and there being a lot of barriers up with respect, I think, to, you know, I'm from Shack Tulik or I'm from Golovin or I'm from Elam or I'm from Kotzebue and I'm from Noatak. Um, we set ourselves up not to be open with each other and not to share and not to find out that, you know, Bill's as human as I am and that he has needs like I do. Um, so consequently, because we have this attitude, and I'm not saying that, you know, it's prevalent, but I'm, it, it, it does happen is that, you know, we'd never reach out to each other, even though we're related. We'll never reach out and say, you know, Bill, I need your help, or Bill, I've got a problem and can you talk to me? Will you listen to me? Um, and I've seen that happen over the past two days. You know, the kids reaching out to each other and beginning to work as teams in sharing with one another. When I was driving down here, I was thinking about a couple of things. <clears throat> one of them is, when, one of the things that I was thinking about is when I heard <coughs> an elder say one time that it's very important to listen to listen quietly, to listen respectfully when someone comes into your presence with something to share. And the other thing was that I was once your age too, <laughs> and I have memories of my own youth when I was growing up. The focus of the camp was substance abuse prevention and included an inspiring talk by lecturer Mary Miller, who gave a presentation titled Self, which stood for Spirituality, Earth, Love, and Family. How many chickens is it? 120 plus, what, 10 mark now? 132 chickens. Well, it took 72 chickens split in half to feed the 85 students, the 20 or so counselors and speakers, plus the elders that attended the camp. The camp at Nuke is located 23 miles east of Nome, near safety. Besides teaching the youth not to use drugs and alcohol, the camp's activities agenda featured a variety of things to do, like games of Eskimo baseball and scavenger hunts. But like summer camps all over the world, it can be a little lonesome sometimes. Hmm? I want to go back on. You do? Yep, you do it smart. Have you met some other friends here? <laughs> These three guys from Koyak survived the four days just fine. There's another story here. It was probably one of the first times Norton Sound Health Corporation and Manilik Association joined forces in this manner, sharing ideas and staff. If 15 villages can get together and two recovery programs, why not the whole state? The people from Cotsby in our region come down here to Nome and vice versa. And I think, you know, if we can link together across the Seward Peninsula and hold hands, I think that, you know, we'll get somewhere. We'll finally get somewhere. And that's my hope, not just for our region, but also for the whole state of Alaska. Thank you, David Renner from Nome, for that excellent video. As you know, I ask people like David to get out the camcorder and send me video or else you might just voluntarily send me some and then I edit it into stories. It's really very simple. If I haven't covered your community, get your camcorder out. It's very simple to do. Call me collect at area code 907-272-8111 and together we'll get your community on Heartbeat Alaska. And speaking of getting on Heartbeat Alaska, are there any contemporary rock and roll bands, native groups, whether you be country and western or folk or a praise group or rock and roll please give me a call you don't have to be professional you could be just a group that meets on occasion please get out your camcorder record it for me and we'll put it on heartbeat alaska and that's a promise
Whether you're Athabascan, Clinket, Haida, Shimshin, Aiyut, Inupiaq, Yupik, all the rest of the groups throughout the state of Alaska, whether you're Inuit, whether you are Navajo, thank you so much for joining me. And to all our non-natives brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us right here on Heartbeat Alaska. And I'll see you next week. Ta 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 